Hello, it's Thursday. I was asked this week how I started my Emacs adventure and what do you have to do to walk the same road that I did. So uh, I thought a bit about this for uh, a couple of days and, uh, and I wrote this small talk so I hope you enjoy it. So I will start out by showing you where I started, how I started with Emacs and uh, then we'll take it from there. So how I started, this here is my .emacs file and it's not even digital, uh, it wasn't my parents' attic. Um, it's from 2001, January the 7th and um, you can see things like there was no package management back then so I had an Emacs directory in my home folder and I would download in different tarballs from the different project websites uh, so, for instance, the JDE package, that was very important, gave me a Java development environment. And I would have to know that that required semantic version 1 to 1 and speed bar 0 0.12 and so on. And then I would then manually add that to the load path. And then eventually, when that, this combination here was correct, then I could do require JDE. And then finally, I had some, I had some Java goodness in Emacs. Right, so when talking about walking the same road that I took, uh, I'm not exactly recommending this approach, but this is where I started out. So today I would like to, this this year is for you who are new to Emacs and uh, would like to try out uh, the, the approach that I did. So uh, first I'll go through installing Emacs and then give you an Emacs survival guide and then show you how you start out with a clean.emacs file and then we will set up a package manager and install some essential packages so you get a more comfortable editing environment while still keeping Emacs really, really clean, uh, on which you can build your Emacs implementation. So installing Emacs, that's the first thing. Um, I do recommend that you get the latest version um, and you get the graphical version. Um, you know, even though if you're on Mac, uh, there's an Emacs version that's pre-installed but it's terminal based and it's also quite old. Um, get the graphical version, it has so many more bells and whistles going for it. It has beautiful fonts, uh, smooth scrolling, many other things. And besides, you know, the, the discussion forums and stuff, they very, very often, you know, refer to newer functions or newer versions of Emacs. So I definitely recommend it. So if you are in Linux, you can just apt-get install or yum install or pacman install Emacs. Um, for Mac, uh, there are two websites that seem particularly good uh, that build a version for macOS with uh, with graphical support. Um, be aware that if you if you like to use Homebrew, uh, the default Homebrew Emacs version that only gives you text-based Emacs. So there's another port which gives you a graphical version that I recommend. Um, and then Emacs, uh, Windows users, they can head off to the official GNU.org website and get an official Emacs build for Windows. And all of these, when you have the graphical version, you know, it integrates with your desktop environment. So if you prefer to drag and drop files from your file manager, you can do that. You know, of course, it's a lot faster to use the Emacs shortcuts and so on, but it integrates with the desktop environment. So you can drag and drop pictures and, and text files and so on. So the Emacs Survival Guide has a couple of things that I would like to show you. And the first is the annotation. So when you read Emacs documentation and discussion forums, you see capital C and capital M being thrown about. And it means C means uh, control and M means alt or the meta key. Um, if none of those two works, you know, try the escape key. Okay, so control dash H, that means hold the control key down and H at the same time. And if it's no dash, it means control H at the same time first, and then you let go, and then you hit T. So, and that shortcut here, that's actually for the Emacs built-in tutorial. So here I have a clean Emacs, um, and if I hit control H, T, I enter the tutorial which is a doc special document that you can navigate to learn the shortcuts. And, excuse me, Emacs has shortcuts for absolutely everything. So, and it's about speed. So 
ultimately you don't want to use the arrow keys or the home and end key, the page up and the page down. Of course you can do, but you know, if you want to get really, really fast and get all the benefits of Emacs, I do recommend that you follow this tutorial so you learn that you can do control F to do right key and control B to do left and so on and so forth. Uh, this tutorial will take you, I don't know, anywhere between half an hour and an hour and that's really, really well invested time. It's one of the best pieces of advice I can give you really. Do this tutorial. Then there's a lot of built-in help in Emacs and they're all they all start with control H. So you have control H key for keyboard shortcuts. If you wonder what does this shortcut call out to, you know, what, what does it do? You can do uh, control H K and then keyboard shortcut. Um, so I will do that here. So I will figure out what did I exactly start this tutorial. So I do control H and then K and then I do control H and T. And then it will say that, oh, this circuit here that runs the command that's called help with tutorial and I get a description of it and I can even delve further down, you know, often the, the source code will be linked and I can read the source code, you know, here there's even even the source code, so it's a tutorial EL and I can jump to that. Um, yeah. Um, there's also, I can search for things, like I can do, if I wonder about Java, I can just write Java and then I get all kinds of things that has to do with Java that my current Emacs knows about. And this is a clean Emacs, so it doesn't have that many things, you know, but you can see there's a Java mode and there's a JavaScript mode, so there's already some things that has to do with Java. Um, so yeah, let's start with a clean dot Emacs. Um, when I say dot Emacs, uh, some people these days they right use this file, but I started out with just dot Emacs, so that's what I'm going to use. But when I say dot Emacs, it could just as well be in it dot el. Um, I do recommend setting up uh, the package manager, so that requires this stuff here. Don't worry about it. It's um, you know, you don't need all these to know all these shortcuts to load it. I just load the settings without restarting Emacs, you know. But in the beginning, just save it in a file and then restart Emacs, and you have the new settings active. That's what I did. That's how I started. But as you can see, I've added two repositories here. There's one new official one, and there's one Melpa that has a lot of other packages. Um, and then I add. Uh, all these packages will then be installed to this directory and I will add that to the load path so similar to say Java where you have a class path and Emacs has a load path to load the different packages that you have installed. That's the first thing and then you must be sure that the Emacs.d exists um, and now you can do list packages so let's do that meta x and then list packages and you can see now there are lots and lots of packages available. There's a real canister here and you can do enter and you can read more about packages and you can install them, you can upgrade them and remove them. So the first package I would install is called use package and it's something that makes configuring Emacs a lot more comfortable. There. So now I evaluated it. So I am reconfiguring Emacs without restarting it. But but again, you know, you can just edit this in a in a different web edit, if, you know editor and restart Emacs on each time in the beginning. That's also fine. Okay. So now I have used package installed, and that makes configuring Emacs a lot uh, more comfortable. So I will now show you the packages that I cannot live without, and I would. You know, highly recommend that you take a look at these. So the first one is to turbocharge some of the standard operations that you do all the time in Emacs. So you've seen now that I used MetaX to interact with Emacs. It's like the command interface to Emacs. And now when I hit MetaX, I get a nicer interface. I have now I can you know write E and I get you know 
it uh, narrows down the options that I have left that I need to hit tab tab. Um, I have um, I menu. So there's not I menu here, but if I did, let's say, if I open a file that has a couple of functions in it, say here's a shell script with two functions, and by default you have like a menu that allows me to tab complete to to navigate so I can you know navigate to tear down like that. But now with council I can do this instead and then I can even faster search and I can instantly see all the available options. Yeah, much really much recommended. And there are others as well like the scribe function now. Um it's just nicer than the default. Uh, yeah, the council outline, that's another nice thing. So if you have like an org file, it's like a note-taking note mode. And I have two sections. I can now jump between them like that. With control. All right. Then re RTFM, uh, that's read the fine manual. There's a really nice package called iRich that integrates documentation in the mini buffer in the command interface to Emacs. So let's install that as well. So now, uh, when I hit midx, I get the documentation in the mini buffer. So I get, uh, I find this really, really useful. So if I do, say, man, I can say, oh, get the Unix manual page. And put it into the buffer, right? So, manual SSH, for instance, and then get the man page for SSH inside your Emacs in, in its own buffer. Very, very useful. The last package I will show you is Projectile, and it gives you project management features. So, if I now open a small project like Rocket, it's a Java project, um, I can jump to any file now. Uh, I can jump to README. And I can jump to. Yeah, I don't have fussy search enabled yet, but still, I can navigate to all the files in the project and it understands that it's inside of a Git project and it only gives me completion of the files inside of the Git repo checkout. And, uh, and it ignores everything that's in Git ignore and so on. It's very, very clever. Uh, it it allows me to search, for instance, I can search for Rocket and get search hits only inside of this repository. And standard Emacs functionality, like I can hit enter to open that search hit and I can go to the next search hit by control X backtick um, and so on. So, Projectile, very, very nice. It also has, you can generate tags. Uh, for your project, so you get basic uh, file navigation like jump to source, find references for this symbol at point, so on. You get that for free within with uh, Projectile. So, highly, highly recommended. So, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today um, installing Emacs, learning how to learn, which I believe is the most important thing you can learn, and uh, writing your own Emacs from, sc uh, from scratch set up a package manager and install a couple of packages that really boost your productivity. Um, there's a great active Reddit. Um, there's Emacs Wiki with lots of information um, and the builds for Windows and Mac OS that I talked about earlier. And before you go, if you think that's way too much work to write everything from scratch, you know, you should know that there are Emacs start kits that yeah, that you can use instead, you know, there's Doom Emacs, Space Emacs, Preload, you know, they're all excellent, but today I show you how I started out with Emacs and how I would recommend other people to start out. If you are willing to invest the time, uh, you will get a lot back for it. That's it. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.